Good day. This video is about Trontella distortion and this round we'll be using copper 2 plus as an example. The first thing, there are two types of Trontella distortion. On the left hand side you can see a perfect octahedral without any distortion, which means the bond links between the metal and the donor atom of the ligand, that bond links are equal in all directions. For all six those donor atoms that bond links are identical. So it's fully symmetrical. Now when there's distortion, some of these bond links changes, which makes that the, all the bond links are not equal any longer and therefore it has a lower distortion. In the example here in the middle you can see that it has been elongated in the Z direction. And this type of distortion is called actual elongation because elongation has happened in the actual direction. So in this distortion two bonds have been elongated. On the right hand side you can see that it has been distorted in the X and the Y direction. That's your equatorial position so that therefore this distortion is called equatorial elongation and as you can see four bonds have been elongated. In nature actual elongation is more often observed than equatorial elongation because over here with actual elongation only two bonds has been elongated where in the case of actual compression four bonds have been elongated. So we're going to look at John Teller distortion using copper as an example, copper 2 plus. So when you look at the periodic table, and you start counting from the left hand side, here from the hydrogen group 1, then beryllium group 2, so you, so you start counting from, from the left to the right, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you can see copper is in group 11. Therefore, the electron configuration is argon, 3d10, 4s1. This orbital has lost one electron to fill up the d orbital, so the d orbital has got 10 electrons, so it's fully symmetrical, fully full, and in this case, it's more stable configuration than putting the electron in the s. So copper like chrome is an exception. So in the case of copper 2 plus, it has an oxidation state of plus 2, which means it has lost 2 electrons. The electron of the 4s has been lost, and 1 electron from the 3d orbital has been lost. So that gives us a configuration of argon 3d9. So we have 3, in the 3d orbital we have 9 electrons. So in the case of an undistorted octahedral, you'll have two orbitals on the higher energy, the dz square and the dx square minus y square. So they are degenerate, and you've got three orbitals down here on the lower energy level, uh, which is the dxy, dxz, and the dyz. So now we have those nine electrons, so we can start filling them up. And then we end up with a situation that either the dz square or the dx square minus y square has two electrons and the other orbitals has got one. So you can see that these two orbitals in the higher energy is not equally filled. This orbital is full and that orb orbital is half full, which means the orbital, the dz square orbital, is fuller than the dx square minus y square. So therefore, there is more repulsion in the z direction and as a result of the repulsion, more repulsion in the z direction, we observe an elongation in the z direction which means the bond length between the metal and the donor atom of the ligand is longer. Because of this elongation, it decreases the amount of repulsion that is observed and therefore that orbitals in this direction has a lower energy. So therefore the dz square and the orbital containing z, 3x, z, uh, d, y, z have lower energy. This slide is similar to the previous one, just once again showing that the dz square 
contains more electrons than the dx square minus y square. So there's more repulsion in the z direction. So this is this brown over here is your dz square orbital, and it means there's more repulsion in this direction, and therefore that results in an elongation in this direction. So therefore, actual elongation is observed. So in this case, we've made a different choice in terms of where we are placing the ninth electron. So in the previous time, we've put two electrons in the dz square, and this round, we are putting two electrons in the d x square minus y square orbital, which means this orbital is now fuller than that orbital. So therefore, there's more repulsion in the x, y direction. So there's more repulsion in this direction, the x and the y direction, which means elongation is observed in the x and the y direction. Since there's elongation in the x and the y direction, the bond length has increased between the metal and the donor atom of the ligand, and therefore that results in less repulsion after distortion, which means the orbitals that contain, say, X and a Y have lower energy. So you can see this orbital, which is in the X and the Y direction, has a lower energy. And this orbital over here, which is between the X and the Y um, axis, has a lower energy. So similar to the previous slide, you can see this orbital, the dx square minus y square, contains more electrons than the dz square, which means there are more repulsion in the xy direction, so there's more repulsion in this direction, resulting in an elongation in this direction, which means the, that results in a lower um, energy, so your dz square, your dxy orbitals have lower energy. As explained before, that um, equatorial elongation is similar or the same as actual compression. So instead of these ones um, elongating, it may appear as if those two ligands has moved closer. So actual compression in equatorial elongation is the same type of distortion.